from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Week. Now, here's John Furrier. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the special CUBE exclusive on the water coverage of the awesome cryptocurrency event going on this week, Blockchain Week, New York City. Decentral, uh, Anthony DiOrio is having a big special event, launching some great killer products. We have two CUBE alumni that we introduced at Polycon 2018, uh, Jeremy Decaro and um, Jeremy Gartner. Great to see you guys. Hey, thanks for having us. So you guys look fabulous. You look beautiful, you're smart, we're on a boat, we're partying. It feels like... Prom? <laughs> it feels like prom. Feels like we are at the top of another bubble. Couldn't feel better. Five more boat parties and then the bubble's officially at the top. But we're only had the first boat party. Well, the real existential question is, what do we do next? You know, we've, we've graduated from nightclubs and strip clubs and now to super yachts. Like, do we go on a spaceship next or a Boeing? SpaceX. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the, the, the options are somewhat limited in how we scale up the crypto parties. I actually heard today one of my clients is launching in space a crypto mining operation that's fueled by solar power. So we might be going to space. Elon Musk wants to get involved. I agree. Like, where are we going? <laughs> you guys are awesome. Love the creative. So this party to me is really a testament to the community. Talk about the community. Obviously, Polycon was great. Um, uh, in Puerto Rico, they had Restart Week. And that, but I heard these guys saying here at Decentral that the community is fragmented. Is the community fragmented? Seems like it's not out there, or is this only one pocket of the community? I think the community, so we have 10,000 people at Consensus, okay? So these are 10,000 people that have gone down the rabbit hole, and they're all at the Hilton in Midtown Manhattan kind of going like, how'd you get involved? Why are you here? 10,000 people is a lot. But I think that, yeah, we're, we're at the decentral party, so some of these communities are being fragmented. But I think we're having like infrastructure built to kind of connect the broader world to the things, whether it's custodial services, whether it's like tonight, the Jax 2.0 wallet, and you know, everything that's getting involved there. I don't know, Jeremy, Jeremy. Jeremy's like an international traveler, so he probably is better. Jeremy, you know, is, this, is this an echo chamber, uh, uh, what's so going on? I, I, well, it's 100% an echo chamber. But more importantly, rabbit holes are like dark and confusing places. They're, they're winding and a lot of people are here for very different reasons. And thus, when you have all these new entrants to the industry, to this technology, here for all these different reasons, of course you have some fragmentation. You know, in many regards, the ideological and philosophical roots of Bitcoin and blockchain technology have been lost on, on many of the new entrants. And, and so it takes time to get to the point where we're all aligned. And I think different blockchains and different applications of, the, of this technology will have different kind of approaches to how people think about it. And that's, there's always going to be fragmentation because this is a massively growing industry that touches upon every kind of business and governmental and non-governmental sector. I mean, fragmentation is a relative term. You know, sure. Genevieve, you, I saw you um, and you guys are working with things from Cannabis Coin. I think you had Cannabis Cabin this week in New York. Or Yeah, you know, we're doing that tomorrow night, actually. So crypto and cannabis are two of the hottest millennial sectors, right? And so we kind of like to say at Great Capital, we like to dance on the edge of chaos. I actually found out about a cannabis company in Vancouver, so just outside Vancouver, that is using a crypto mining operation and all the excess heat that is coming off that to power a grow up. So we're literally at the intersection of crypto and cannabis, not just for oh. handling money, but handling energy in a different way, which is so fascinating. That's real mission impact, investing right there. You know, <laughs> using energy to grow weed. That's societal <laughs> impact, isn't it? Good, <laughs> bad, I mean, depends on how you look at it, you know? Better cannabis, healthy cannabis, is a mission people are care about. Yeah, we're helping people's wallets <laughs> and we're helping people's minds, right? In like ways that the government, central banks, and pharmaceutical companies are fighting against. So, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. So I welcome AstraZeneca and uh, the Bank of Canada to come on board. 
our mission. Yeah. This is officially turning into a Cube After Dark episode. Yeah. Jeremy, I got to get your thoughts on, on um, these industries because look at cannabis, we joke about it, but that's an example of another market. There's a zillion markets that are coming online that are going to be impacted. So fragmentation is a relative term. It's been how you look at it. I mean, as yeah, long as I, the tech is, infrastructure tech is solid, that's what I'm concerned about. Who nails the infrastructure for network effects? And what's the instrumentation for that? That's the number one question I'm asking. Well, that is the existential question for the protocols, whether it's Ethereum or Bitcoin or EOS, Definity, so forth. The protocol that provides the strongest and, and most adaptable in infrastructure and foundational technology is going to be one of the main, or th those will be the main winners. And so the names I mentioned, they're up there. They're, they're very competitive, but it's anybody's game right now. I, I think any blockchain could come along right now and be the winner a decade from now. And for entrepreneurs, that presents a challenge because you have to figure out what blockchain to go build on top yeah. of. This is why I'm big on investing in interoperable ledgers, technologies that enable the kind of transfer of smart contracts and crypto assets between blockchains. It's a great, great segue. Let's just get an update since we last talked. What are you working on? What are you investing in? What's new in your world? Share the update on, great. on so Jeremy. My, so, so now my fund is officially launched where- How much? We launched with just over $15 million and amazingly, we launched at the perfect time. We're already up 55%. <laughs> and probably Without making an investment. <laughs> which, is, which, is, which is amazing for a venture fund. Uh, we actually did six you, equity investments, okay, some did, of okay. which transferred over from my it, okay. uh, personal investment portfolio. But doing great, I uh, have really run the gamut in terms of investments we're making on the equity side of things and in crypto assets. But what we're seeing is really accomplished entrepreneurs coming to this space. Contain actually more optimism than I had felt uh, at Polycon. At Polycon, I was like, this market needs to correct in a real way. Today, I think that correction's been prolonged. If we were going to feel a lot of pain, it was going to be two months ago. But instead, I think it's going to be one to three years before the market goes through the correction that we need to see for the real shakeout to happen. Because so many of these teams that I think are garbage have so much money. Yeah, and that's just floating around. They got to work their way out. It's just like a bad burrito. At some point, it's got to pass. Genevieve, what are you working on? I'll see you got grid capital. What's the update on your end? What's new? Yeah, amazing. Actually, literally today, probably about 60 minutes ago, uh, my business partner and I signed one of the fastest growing exchanges in Canada called Einstein Exchange as a client. So these guys have only ever raised like one and a half million US and they're the biggest exchange in Canada by signups, active accounts. So they're probably doing like almost 100 million in top line transaction volumes and they're probably never going public. Somebody's probably going to buy them, but we're going to be marketing them across the country, getting customers. I mean, the tagline is it doesn't take Einstein to open an account. It shouldn't take Einstein to buy Bitcoin. You can literally get this account set up in under 60 seconds. So their value process is ease of use. Short, yeah, totally. Reducing the steps it takes to do it and get it up and running fast. Absolutely. Like my dad could do it and like, you know, he only has a Blackberry still, so. <laughs> All right, so I was saying now follow you on Instagram and Facebook, which is phenomenal, by the way. You've got a great lifestyle. What's the coolest thing you've done since we last talked at Polycon? Wow, Polycon was kind of a high. It was like, <laughs> we, 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 we really peaked, and then everyone got sick. Like, our team got sick, Polymath, Untraceable, because everybody just... Got the flu, yeah. Yeah, we were like on adrenaline, and then we kept going. Uh, what's the coolest thing that we've done since then? I think it's signing up like cool companies like Einstein. We also signed a big cannabis company in Colombia called Chiron. They're about to go public. Um, I don't know, Nicole, what do you think? What, what have we done? I don't know, my business What's partner. the coolest thing you've done? Travel, she what place you did? Yeah, okay. actually, so last night Jeremy and I just met. We we're together on a blockchain research institute project that Finova Financial okay. is backing, and yeah, meeting him. So, you guys working together on a, on a special project right now? Yeah, we're yeah. on an advisory board together. Yeah. Okay, cool. How's that going? What's that about? So, they're creating a JCO, which is a new sort of Who's coin they? offering. Uh, they're called Finova, they're a financial services firm, and they're creating a what it can effectively be understood as a compliant coin offering that is available to more than just accredited investors. And thus they're making ICOs something that 
falls within the pre-existing regulatory framework and also accessible to your average Joe, which I think is really important if we're going to follow the initial vision for both blockchain technology and coin offerings. All right, final question. I know you guys want to get back to your dancing and uh, schmoozing, networking, doing biz dev, doing deals, having fun. What is blockchain New York week all about? We, blockchain week here in New York. What the hell's happening? There's been a lot of events. What's your guys' assessment? Have you observed and saw anything? Can you share for the people who didn't make it to New York or not online, reading all the action? What's happened? So as someone that did not attend consensus, spoke at three other events, uh, or am speaking at three other events, I can say with certainty that the New York Blockchain Week has been about bringing together virtually everyone in the industry to connect and kind of catch up with one another, which is really important. We, we don't have that many events. Miami was too short. The industry's gotten too big. But having a full week of activities in New York City has enabled me to kind of foster relationships. Good ROI. And, uh, yeah. Come in, get a lot of work Incredible. done. Incredible, I've gotten so much work done. I haven't had to actually be at any conferences to reconnect with just about everyone that I want to see in the industry. And that's really special. Genevieve, what is your observation? What have you observed? Share some in anecdotes, some insight on what happened this week. I know Fluidity started, I saw Bill Ty was just chatting with him about it. It was started in the, over the weekend, and it's gone up and we're now into Thursday, tomorrow, coming up. Well, I don't think it's a coincidence that Goldman Sachs came out today and said that they were launching some sort of digital currency. Uh, <laughs> Marketing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hello. Using the power of the 10,000 people at Consensus. But yeah, no, I agree with, with, with what Jeremy says. It's not really about being at consensus, it's about what happens like behind closed doors. It's all these decentralized parties or that are doors, happening. Or open yeah, doors. or open doors. But like it's you know like we hosted at Great Capital last year. We had a hundred people in a suite at the uh, Dream Hotel, and it was just like you put the biggest CEOs of the mining companies in the world together, and like put those with investors in a room. It's like you know hundred people, and that's where the deals happen. It's not like in the big, you know huge auditorium where like nobody looks at each other and everyone's on their phone. It's well I got to tell you, the, we know we, the entrepreneurship side is booming, so I totally love the entrepreneurial side. Check, 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 mm -hmm. access to capital, new kinds of business models, token economics. So we reported on all that. To me, the big story is Wall Street in New York City has been kind of stuck. The products kind of like are old, it's antiquated, like the financial products. And like, that's why Goldman's coming out. They got nothing, what, they don't have anything. What do they got? So you see in a stagnant, they got traditional products. And a but press release. Nothing really like new, fresh. So you got in comes crypto. Yeah. Just do a little crypto watches. So I think I see the New York crowd going, this is something that is exciting and we could productize potentially. So I don't think they know yet what that is, but I think some of the things that are going on, you guys are figuring it out. I like, I like, so I, my dad's always the kind of barometer to this whole thing and he's like, when are they going to come out with like a salesforce.com for the blockchain, right? Like some sort of application that it doesn't matter if you're like in legal, if you're like in investment banking, like some sort of pervasive application that just goes wild. We don't have that yet. When is that happening? Jeremy, Jeremy you're good at, predict gonna happen? You're good at predicting the future. Jeremy, uh, pick a date. Well, so it's the Netscape moment, if you will. The, the moment that blockchain technology becomes tangible. And, I, and in re retrospect, a few years out, we may decide Netscape that that moment- Netscape for all the young browsers, browsers <laughs> the original browser for the internet. Yeah. Uh, that was that, like that during moment, my that time. That moment may have already happened. We don't really know. It may be a bit, been something like Ethereum or Augur, you know, something where there's a use case, but people haven't wrapped their heads around it yet. But if it hasn't happened yet, it's coming. It's we're, we're on the cusp of it. Because people know what Bitcoin is, they've heard of the blockchain, it is part of the zeitgeist now, and, and that cultural relevance is so important for having that Netscape moment. Jeremy Genevieve, thanks so much for spending the time here on the ground, on the water, for our special CUBE coverage of Blockchain Week New York City, consensus, um, you had all kinds of different events. You had the Crypto House where we were at, tons of Fluidity Conference, all this stuff going on. Good to see you guys, you look great. Yeah, Thanks for sharing great. the update here. And theCUBE, special coverage. I'm John Furrier, Thanks for watching. Thanks for having us. Thanks.